we would imagine if they're all organized and pure, intact, that Fa, fraction isotropy, is going to be high. It's going to be very linear. But with diffuse axonal injury, torn axons, sheared axons, we can imagine the fluid's going to be leaking all over. So it's no longer like a tube, it's more like a diffuse, so that Fa, the fractional anisotropy, decreases. Again, just summarizing, healthy organized tubes, anisotropy is high. Injured, disorganized, anisotropy is low. And again, just bringing that home, because this is an important point. This is basically the basis about which di diffusion tensor imaging. Then the question is, what's a tensor? So tensor just means a number, a zero-dimensional number, what's called a scalar, which is the magnitude of diffusion. Multiple. Generally, CT scan, not very useful for mild TBI. As a matter of fact, mostly it's negative. MRI, a little more helpful. And DTI, more helpful. But nothing is the holy grail. It's ultimately the clinical exam. Let's not pay attention to any of the names of these fibers. I merely want to indicate these are the super highways of the brain. They connect fibers going front to back, side to side, and top down to the spine. Very important fibers. And even higher than that, over the last number of years, we've been able to appreciate now even a higher scale network called large scale networks. In particular, I want to pay attention to this one, the salience network. Let's say we're sitting in this room. An alarm goes off about 500 feet away. We're all startled. We look at the alarm. As soon as we recognize that it's not going to threaten our life or safety, we put it away. We put it out of our mind. We can do that. Our salience network is working. If you've had a brain injury, you may not be able to. So you may be in a call center with 50 other people, and you can't focus. You need to be in your own room. It's not obvious. We can still walk and talk and move. It's interesting, the anatomy of the brain. So the slide on the left, I have a book about 70 years old by Ludwig Klingler. It's a beautiful book. I got it years ago at an antique store. And this anatomist actually took the time to micro dissect all of the white matter fibers in the brain. That's called in vivo, in the brain. Now we have the ability ex vivo. Using imaging, computer modeling, reconstruction, we can do an amazing amount. This is a typical tensor imaging on a cross section. And by convention, any fibers going right to left are red, front to back are green, top to bottom are blue, and any other colors are just combinations as it's changing direction. And when we put these together through computer processing, we can create these tractograms where we look at uh, connectomes and see how the brain is connected. So brings me to the next talk, topic is this. Agnosias, aphasias, apraxias, agraphias. What is this? These are subtle damages to the cortex connections. May not be a lot, may not be noticed, but can tremendously change a life. So this is taken from Oliver Sacks. He was a neurologist in Manhattan, New York City, and he wrote a couple of books. One was excellent, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. He talked in chapter one about evaluating Dr. P. Dr. P was the conductor of a symphony in New York. Dr. P was in the exam room, they went out to the waiting room, and Dr. P, the conductor, went over to his wife and was reaching for her head. He thought her head, head, he thought her head was his hat. He had a visual agnosia. These are the subtle disconnection difficulties that we see, that we can see. And why? We talked about the connections, but let's take a look here. Adjacent to many primary areas of the brain are association areas.